Greetings and welcome to a new video about Butterworth Respawn's low pass filter design. In this example, we will discuss another example where we consider the selling key filter configuration in order to design our filter. Of course, we will see everything step by step in our calculations and verify this in SPI simulations. Our design objective is shown here. We like to design a Butterworth Response active low pass filter. It should be a selling key filter circuit configuration and we also need to calculate the actual stub bed attenuation. The given specifications are shown here. We need to have a maximum pass band ripple 1 dB. The minimum stub bed attenuation is 40 dB. The cutoff frequency must be 1 kHz and the stop end frequency is 3 kHz. So there is actually the following. This frequency, at this frequency we need to have a minimum attenuation of 40 dB. And at specific frequency we will calculate shortly which is called the pass band frequency. There you need to reduce your gain to 1 minus 1 dB. That is actually the uh, meaning of these specifications. That will be clarified also in our simulation result shortly. Okay, let's look at our solutions. First, the calculations step by step. First, we start with the first uh, the filter order. That means we need to relate our A max and A minimum to the scaling factors like the epsilon p in this case. That means the epsilon p will be then the value from this formula. Substitute here the A max 1 that will result in 0 0.5088. In a similar case, we calculate epsilon s using the A minimum that will result here in 99.995. Now taking this together and substitute that in the formula of the Butterworth response uh, filter design, you get now here the result for the N, which is 4.8067. In order to realize our circuit, we need to have an integer value. So we can go, of course, to the fourth order, but that will not fulfill the specifications. So we need to go to an integer value, which is then, in this case, 5. So in order to realize this circuit, we need to have a fifth order cell and key filter. That can be designed using a cascade of a three pole and a two pole cell and key low pass filter circuits. So that means actually the following. You have a three pole low pass filter cell and key in cascade with a two pole low pass filter cell and key. But that is actually what we need to design. That means we need to design or calculate all the components here. Now is that, is, that is the second step, step two. The component values. Now we can select here in order to make the calculations easy all these five resistors R2, R1 up to R5 all let's say one kilo ohm. Then the next step is calculating the scaling factor that is done using this formula so we define a capacitor or a C as a scaling factor which is then 1 over the R which is selected here and also the cutoff frequency in omegas. Now the omega c is of course 2 pi times this fc. Now when you substitute here the values, 1 over 1000 for our 1 kilo ohm, 2 pi times again this 1000 from the cutoff frequency given in the specifications, then this is the value we will use as a scaling factor. Now this is an important value that needs to be used in order to calculate the capacitors in this circuit. Now we have here Butterworth response table. And we know that we need an NS5, that means we need to look at this, so I will now uh, designate this here. And you see also that we need the number of sections, which is 2, so that's also true because we have this section 1 and another section 2. And we need to have a 3-pole and a 2-pole. Now we need to read this actually as follows. You see here 1.753 and then this 1.354 and also the 0 0.421. That, these three values or parameters are for the three pole uh, cell and key filter. The other two 3.235 and the 0 0.3090 are for the two pole cell and key low pass filter. And that means if you look at the C1 over C and C2 over C and C3 over C these ratios are then also equal to the values which you see here. So let's see that here in detail what we mean by that. So we have a 3-pole and a 2-pole. So for a 3-pole, again, we need to use this 1.753 first. That is actually shown here. You see that actually C1 is then 1.753 times the scaling factor C. 
And the second one is using this value here, 1.354, then times, again, the scaling factor will be then the capacitor C2. And C3 will be then this value times the scaling factor we have here, and that's actually shown here. Now for the tuple for our second stage, we need to use this value, two point, I mean 3.235 times the scaling factor. And the final one will be then 0 0.3090 times the scaling factor what we have here now. When we now substitute the values here using this scaling factor, we get now the following results. The first uh, is then 279 nanofarads for our C1. C2 will be then, in this case, 215.5 nanofarads. C3 will be here, 67.07 nanofarads. C4 will be then 514.9 nanofarads. And finally, C5 will be 49.80 nanofarads. So we have now calculated all the capacitor values by selecting the resistors and calculating after that the scaling factor and then using this but the is still unstable. Now the design is now complete in terms of the components. Let's also calculate the actual stop and attenuation. Now for that we can use the passband frequency first. That is also the frequency where you get this uh, attenuation of 1 dB. That can be calculated first by this formula. So for the low pass filter we need to use the FP is equal to F cutoff times this epsilon P we have determined here to the power 1 over the filter order which is in this case 5. So we substitute this here which is in this is the 1000 and then times this epsilon to the power 1 over 5 and that will give you approximately 874 hertz. Okay at this frequency again we will have a gain of minus 1 dB or minus A max. Okay then we calculate now the A minimum using this formula where you see the epsilon P, the stop pen frequency and the pass pen frequency and also the filter order. Now when you substitute here the values you get here 47.7 dB. Now this is indeed larger than the minimum required 40 dB we have for our design. We can also use the formula where you have the cutoff frequency and this is now more convenient for this situation for this design. Then you calculate this using the cutoff frequency, the stop and frequency, and again the filter. So in this case, you don't need the epsilon p. Now again, substitute here the values, you get the exact same result, so 47.7 dB. Okay, let's now look at the simulation results. This is the body plot in the simulator. You see also the circuit in the simulator, in the SPI simulator. You see the input and also the resistors, all of them are 1 kilo ohm. And we have the C1, C2, C3. C4 and C5. Now let's bring also the values here we just determined. You see all these values for the capacitors and the resistors here and also here in the simulator exact same values. We also have the passman frequency and also our actual stop pen attenuation. Let's go one by one. Our low frequency gain is here 0 dB or 1. That is of course true because we have for each stage a gain of 1 in the passband or in the low frequencies. And next we will look at the frequency of 874 hertz and there you see the gain is minus 1 dB. And this is exactly as we have calculated because the maximum passband ripple means that at this frequency, which is the passband frequency, you need to reduce your gain from this baseline by 1 dB according to the specification, so which is also true. Now the gain is here minus 3.01 dB, which is at 1 kilohertz. And that is also the cutoff frequency specification, so this is also correct. And the gain is at 3 kilohertz here, you see that is minus 47.7 dB. And that is the stop band attenuation, actual stop band attenuation we have also calculated, this is also shown here. And this is again indeed more, more than the minimum required 40 dB. So we meet actually all the specifications according to this example. All right, that was our example considering the Butterworth Response Active Low Pass Filter. We have used the selling key filter configuration. We have calculated the required component values. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. I will try to answer them ASAP. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video.